Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the New England Racing Show. Uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, Channel 23. We're also on YouTube. And like us on Facebook, you'll get the show automatically. Well, the last two weeks, uh, we've been showing you the uh, Bullring Bash, the big open modified race from Lee Speedway. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was quite an event. Uh, 36 cars showed up. There was some question as to why uh, none of the tour modified cars showed up. Some of their drivers did driving other cars. And I guess they just, uh, they're the tour and that's all they are. Uh, but it was nice to have some of their guys show up. We had a, a lot of good drivers and uh, it was a really good show. Uh, unfortunately for Stevie Massey and Todd Anarumo, they got their cars torn up on the last turn of the last lap, uh, fighting for second and third place. But they drove, they both drove really good races. I have a question races. about Hoosier tires. Uh, Steve drove from last starting spot to leading the race at the end and almost won the damn thing. So, uh, you know, he's got nothing to be ashamed of and Todd ended up uh, taking a wild ride over him. And it's funny, uh, on Facebook a few days later, they showed a uh, pile up on the uh, 495 or whatever, and they showed one car on top of another. And Todd posts, he goes, was Stevie Massey on the pike? <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was a good show. And we were showing you a presentation by Irish Saunders, the Hoosier Tire Guru. We had the first two parts up. And there's a little bit left, which we're going to uh, take care of today, part three. And uh, we're going to go to that now. So let's hear the rest of Irish Saunders' presentation. 75 and a half. That, that's kind of a common number up here. Is that 75, three quarters, 75 and a half, something like that? we got to remember one thing. When you start pulling those sizes, sooner or later, they, they can't hit every, it's not a radial, so I can't hit 75 and a half every single time, okay? So what happens is it's like a box of assorted chocolates. It's like everybody likes the caramels, but once all the caramels are gone, there's that coconut in there. And I, I really don't like, some people like coconut. You might like coconut. <laughs> but not everybody likes coconut, you know? So, so but they're there, and, and I can't throw tires away. Um, so so we, we shoot for the spec, like 75 and a half. That's what we shoot for every single time. But it being natural material, it's hard to have that tire hit on that 75 and a half every single time. So when you do see some tires coming in, say, oh, God, look at these. They all came in 75. Well, they're all, you know, it's not that we did it on purpose. It's just that's it's getting down to the. It also could be you also have a fresher tire than the other one. That's a possibility, exact same too. numbers, but one might be. Uh, one might be aged a little bit different. Right. Yep, absolutely. The other thing, Irish, is to cover you up on that is, you know, we're asking you to build a tire for Star Speedway or Seekonk Speedway. We want six inches. We want six and a quarter. You know, we want to take that same tire and go to Thompson. We go, oh, we only want four and three quarter or five. So we're asking a lot for a tire that, oh, we want to stretch it, we want to shrink it. You're giving us what you what we want. We have to work with the left sides to make it all work. So, right. And, you know, the, the light cars may want five inches of stagger. The NEMA cars may want five and a half, five and three quarter. So it's tough to do this with this one tire that everybody thinks, geez, this is the magical number I want. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It does I remember back. And years ago, pardon me, but years ago, before we had, uh, when we ran Goodyear's, uh, there was no number on the tire. You picked your tire up, you put it on the car, and you worked with it. And that's, you know, just to have the, the chalk mark is, is a good reference for us, but it isn't cast in stone that this is what yeah. the tire is going to be. Yeah, you're right. And and, and that's, that's something that we talked about. You know, we, we, we joke about it in the plant, but we, we're not going to do it. We talk about taking the chalk mark off. Maybe we just ought to take it off. You know, it wasn't me anything. And I don't know how many of you how many of you still use a tape measure and tape tape the tires. A lot of people still do. It. Tape them before you mount them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people still do that, and, that, and that's fine. That, you know, if that works, and that, that's great. So we three size number is just a good number to work with. It just gives you a guideline. You know, it just gives you a baseline. Here's where you got to go. You know, hey, I need a little bit bigger one. Yeah, I'm going to try. They got a 75 and three quarter. I'll, 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 I'm going to check that. And we shouldn't worry about the tape and just put the 35 pounds in, and that's it. 35 pounds in it and air it up to 35 pounds. Don't weigh more than that. I yeah. just don't. And, and it's not that I don't trust the tire, but we've had issues here with, with wheels. 
we've had any issues with wheels, wheels collapsing. Yeah. And that, that's what that's what bothers me. And actually, we've had a couple guys in our in our track service that has. I mean, most of us don't put the valve and then blow the suckers up to lay like pot. You uh, probably got 60, 65 pounds in there. I, I've seen I've seen guys. <laughs> uh, you know, they'll, they'll set out. And, and, and here's the thing: if you're going to stretch it, you can't yeah. stretch a tire. You can shrink it. Yeah. But do it after your tire's hot. Yeah. The best thing you can do, and then again, I'll tell you what we did on the modified tour a lot of times, is we would go out in our hot lap session and scuff the qualifying tires, right? But what we would do is when the tires were hot, we'd come in, jack the car up, we'd let all the air out of the left rear, and we'd shrink it up. And we could gain almost an inch to an inch and a quarter of stagger just by shrinking the left rear up, right? So we'd go out and we'd set our, do our time trials. We'd run more air pressure in the left front than the right front for time trials. And then once, the, once we got done, then what they would do is when the tires were still hot after time trials, they'd stick a bunch of air in the left rear and take that nylon and try to stretch that nylon up while it's hot. So it's just like what you're doing with the post inflation when it comes out of the mold. You're trying to get the tire to take a set and make a bigger tire because we didn't because we only wanted we might want to qualify with four inches, yeah. but then we only want to race with two and a half. So we we go ahead and do that, but and then get the tire up so we can keep the size, you know, and then not run a bunch of air in the left rear. So anytime you're going to try to shrink and grow, it's always time, it's always good to do it when the tires are hot. And everybody's like, well, you know, I, I go ahead and I set them out in the sun and. I put air to them and I just leave them out in the sunset and that, that's just, you're not going to get them hot enough. You're just not going to get them hot enough to do that. You know? More questions? Yeah. You take two um, two exact sets of tires, one one with a left rear at 22 and one with a left rear at 22.5, and say this fag is the same and you won't run that, the 22.5 always tends to become a tighter tire, you know, two, three laps into it. Why is that? Is there something different with the construction of that no, tire? No, it's all, it all has to do with the spring rate of the tire. Um, that, that taller tire is going to be a softer spring rate than what a shorter tire is. No. Um, it's always better to try to run a shorter tire with more air pressure because it will turn better. Um, a taller tire with less air pressure will always, back to that thing I, I talked right. about the cornering force, it <coughs> it'll, it'll just keep driving the nose and it won't let the car rotate. So the actual construction of the tire is basically the same. Identical. The, the Identical. Tire. It's just the size of the tire. Oh. The right rear, the, the compounds are the same. The front tires, they're all the same construction also. Everything's the same there too. And I've always found that the shorter the tire is across the front, the better the car turns too. Right. Probably you just got a bunch of tall tires in by for the right front, so now you're going to have to have all short ones. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. There is, you know, back in the day, as you would say. Back in the day, yes. Yeah. Uh, who's your tire there? I, mean, I think it was a 52 compounds, a 45, or whatever. I'm at 48. Was there. When there were four, we had 48s, 52s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We used to uh, we used to scuff in the tires like well, next week's race, just like this week. You know what I mean? Just just run them, you know, on a short warm up or something, and just set them aside for the next week you know, mm -hmm. to make them a little longer or whatever. Yep. I mean, is, is there anything to that? Now? Absolutely. Or no. Absolutely, there's something to it. If you know that you're going to go to a to to Lee. Next week is least probably the toughest track that you got on tires now, right? If you're going to go to Lee, and, and you want to, however you got to do it tech-wise with your tech people, say, hey, I want to scuff my tire for Lee today. You know, scuff it, leave it set until you go to Lee. It'll make it a little tougher. It'll make it a little tougher. Definitely yeah. will. Yeah. Definitely will. It's a lot of, you know, the, it's just the thing with tires is just there's a lot of, Old school stuff that you, you think about, you know, the te with technology changing, but there's a lot of things that still remain the same. That they're just, you know, it still works that way, you know. And it's like, just just like flipping the tires. I mean, it's, I can't stress enough on that. I, I mean, I went to Toledo, and I'm at a super modified race in Toledo, and I see Brian Aldressa, which Brian's a very good friend of mine. And I'm walking by him after the heat race. I said, Brian, you flipping your right rear? Yeah, he said, we we don't do that anymore. I said, why not? And I can't find anybody who wants to do it. I said. What do you mean? He says, my car owner's got enough money, he just goes and buys a brand, another brand new tire. <laughs> I'm like, Brian, I said, man, I said, you, just, you don't want to win the race that bad, do you? <coughs> it just so happens DJ Schulich was there, standing right next to me. He said, what, what are you doing? So I had to explain to him. I said, DJ, I said, here's what they're doing. They run the heat race, they flip on the wheel, and they go out there. DJ says, hey, thanks a lot. Next thing I know, I'm walking by Schulich's bit. There they got the right rear off for flipping it. He ends up, he wins the race that night. <laughs> <laughs> he does that all the time, though. Huh? I bet he does that all the he time. He does it all the time. <laughs> he does it all the time. <clears throat> yes? In the light series, we're limited to two tires a night. What's your recommendation in terms of how often the, I know we have a tendency of 
whenever we put a right rear on, we try to put a right front on at the same time. But that sort of makes a shortfall in terms of probably getting fresh rubber on the left right. rear. Get a higher water. Um, huh? what, what, Get a here's higher what water. you might see now, based off what I've told you now. Flipping that left rear will yeah. help you. I think that'll help you a bunch. Um, I think I'd, I'd look to do it, definitely do a right rear, you know. Yeah. Um, I just but I, back, in the right front you can. But I think yeah, flipping I'm that just... left rear is going to make a difference, big time. And you could flip a right front too. How often do you think we should be putting a new left rear on as opposed to putting that right front on? Do you think? Uh, that that a lot depends on the on the car and on the track. You know, just to say, okay, you need to put it on every third right. You know, I can't sit here and tell you that because I don't know your car. I don't know what track you're running at. I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. You know. Never change the left. Just leave the same left rear on left, all the time. One, one left, oh yeah. Just put an MG6 on and just run it all year long. Because you're always putting your money on your right with right side. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I'll tell you, Irish, I think the NEMA officials would love the idea of everybody flipping because it would be less time to complain about <laughs> everything else that's going on at the track. So I love the idea of the flipping. How about you, Mike? <laughs> well, I, I got to tell you, I mean, again, you know, I, I'm glad I got to come up here and see you guys. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't get a chance to come up here like I used to. Um, I really, three years ago, a lot of you know, and first of all, I want to, I want to thank you guys for a lot of that because I know a lot of the NEMA people helped. Um, my son raced motocross for Tony for, uh, for 13 years. And uh, three years ago, he was practicing for a, a pro race and uh, he was he was in a crash, and he was paralyzed from the from the chest down. And uh, you know the the racing community is a uh, is, is a big it's very big, but I want you to know that the racing family is very small. And uh, it, it it definitely changed our life, our family life. It changed his life forever. Um, I'm glad to say now he he is racing again. Um, Tony Stewart built a a 600 mini sprint he's running now uh, with hand controls. He runs that, he ran fourth in the USAC points this year, his first year running a car. Um, but uh, I gotta tell you, it's, uh, I love this sport. Um, I love racing, I wish I would've got my boys involved in cars sooner than I did. We had a plan and I didn't, I didn't get it done fast enough. <laughs> but it, uh, it definitely changed your life and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I just really want to thank everybody that ever had any prayers or thoughts with him because uh, it happened the day before his 18th birthday. He's 21 now, mm -hmm. and uh, he was he was on top of his game. He was he was living the life of a rock star, and, and uh, now he's he's really got a lot of drive now to, to start racing again. Him and Tony talked to uh, at Daytona, and uh, he has plans that he wants to do the adaptive games for the X Games with Snowcross. His mom's not too high on it right now, and I'm not sure I am either. Yeah. But uh, he does want to, Tony said we are going to build a, a 410 sprint car that we're going to let him hot lap this year. So, uh, but it's, uh, man, keep all your safety equipment on. And, and when you think that nothing can happen to you, you can. Because I, I was I was calloused. I, I saw people getting hurt and I was like, that can't happen to me or to anybody that I know. It can happen, trust me. But. Again, you know, I want to thank everybody with NEMA. I mean, who's your been involved with NEMA for, gosh, a long time, you know? Two years. And, and, I, and I'll tell you what, some of the best times that I can remember with NEMA is when Russ was running Marvin's tires, and I, I respected Marvin so much. That guy was, he was, he was a bomb, I tell you. You know, him and Bob Newton, I wish Bob Newton would have had Marvin's personality, because Marvin, he'd go have a beer with you, and you could sit and BS with him a little bit, you know, and... Uh, I always really respected Marvin. I always will. Um, he's a great guy, and, and but that open competition was was what I what our engineers liked and what I liked, and uh, you know it, it's I, I, unfortunately it cost everybody a lot of money when you're open competition racing. And I, I you know somebody said, well, where do you think you would be if it was open tire rule? I said you'd have about four cars. You'd have two you know, Brand X cars. You'd have two Hoosier cars. You'd be you'd be just tired company to be racing. Um, you know, there again, you know, the cost of the tires, they're, they're cheaper today than what they were 12 years ago because we have brought things down, you know, um, the cost of the tires down. Um, so, I mean, we can do whatever NEMA. I mean, I want to be involved with NEMA for a long time. Um, I, want to, I want to make it fun for you guys because I don't want you to go to the racetrack and say, oh, man, these tires, it just sucks. I'm not having fun doing this. I want to try to do my part. The you know? thing about Marvin is 
he was there when the tire was being made, and he was there at the track while you were running the tire. So he could tell you exactly what you needed to do to get the most out of that tire at the race every weekend. Yep, and he did. He was very good. Unfortunately, I can't do that. I wish I could, but I have a lot of a lot of the things that I've got running a company here for Bob now. So, but uh, I mean, that's why I count on guys like the Seymours. It's been around forever, you know. Um, that they that they help. I mean, I know Boston helped a lot of stuff. He's done a lot of stuff for racing. They've helped a lot of people, you know. And uh, I mean, we just I, I think we got a good team. Hoosier Tire East does a good job down there. Um, and I wish, like I say, I wish we could be more at the race right. I'm gonna try to get up here for in the Boston Louis way. I really want to get to the Boston Louis race this year and uh, watch that. I'm trying to. Bobby wants me to bring in some guys from the Midwest. He wants that. Rico, he wants Rico to come Rico to run. Yeah. yeah, he wants Rico to run Staying a midget. The gas. To run a midget that runs a midget, you know. So, but uh, any other questions you guys got? Yeah. I've got, I've got one, I think it's more for the NEMA board. What's our, uh, in years past the first race, we sort of get an opportunity to put more than the two or three tires to build sort of like an initial inventory? Is there any good? Decision on what that might be this year. No tie rules, no tie rules. No tie rules, first race. Bring 20 ties if you want. No tie rule for the first race. Like first race. Yeah. Open practice on Friday. Bob, Bobby loves it. <coughs> Irish loves it. Hey, real quick about Irish and, and talking about Marvin coming up. Although midget racing, like you said, is a small part of that business, it's an important part of the business, especially to Irish. Irish is out of Indiana. He's coming up here um, to be more hands-on. But if you have questions that you can't seem to get, answers that are not sinking in, maybe email Irish. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to Hoosier Tire, look up Irish Saunders. He's got a Gmail and email address. Mm -hmm. And certainly don't call on a, uh, email him on a Saturday night at 8.30 could, because okay. he's at speedways all over. Maybe he gets it, maybe he doesn't. Sorry. But he's not ignoring you if he doesn't get back to you instantly. But it's important to, um, that... You know, as everything else is getting small, we got to just keep working at trying to contain the tire cost and, of course, the cars because tracks are closing. Look at Waterford's in deep trouble. And so if we keep showing, we certainly got to support these new ventures that we have so that we can get back there next year. Thanks for all coming out, Irish. Thank you very much. Well, that was a good presentation by Irish uh, Saunders. He, I learned a lot about Hoosier tires that I, I didn't know uh, what to do at the track and everything. Uh, that was his presentation to the Northeast Midget Association. He went to Stafford Speedway the next night and gave another presentation to the modified racers. And I, I saw a, a, a photo of that, and there had to be at least 100 people there. So he's going out of his way to make sure that uh, Hoosier Tires uh, is doing everything they can to work with the racers. And uh, I find that to be really uh, going out of his way to, to help us out. Uh, well, we have a uh, little video. Jeff Flock Racing has a couple of supers, or at least a couple. I don't know how many they have in all. They have a Isma winged super and an Oswego wingless super. And uh, Jeff Locke was gracious enough to let us use his in-car video uh, from his Oswego super in the uh, heat last week at Oswego with Randy Ritzke's driving. It's uh, not a long video, but it really... The nice thing about these GoPros, it's got the audio and the video, so it's it, you really get the feel of what you're, what the uh, driver's going through. So uh, we've seen Jeff's cars at at the track, the Isma car, and it to us it was looking like looking at an Indy car as far as the craftsmanship. It was everything was just top notch and spotless. Uh, the nicest Isma supers I've ever seen, really. And I, I know that his Oswego car is the same way. So uh, we're going to get to that video right now. Uh, <laughs>
just to remind everyone there's no rear view mirrors, there's no spotters with these cars. So it's the old fashioned racing. And there's somebody on his outside now. See the green lights to your left on the infield. All the way around the track. I don't know who that is out front, but they're really flying. Okay, yellow flag. You saw a couple of cars up against the wall. Things happen real fast out there. Uh, I believe they have like eight, nine hundred horsepower, and the cars weigh about eighteen hundred pounds. So that's about as fast as you can get. Uh, well, uh, this coming weekend will be opening night at Lee Speedway. I know they've had a couple of they had the uh, Bull Ring Bash and a ACT race, but this is going to start their Friday night series. They're going to have the small block super modifieds, late model sportsmen, hobby stocks six-cylinder and now they have a four-cylinder uh, division also so we'll be there to tape some of that show it to you and then Saturday night at Bear Ridge Speedway our favorite track in the whole world a uh, nice little quarter mile up in Bradford Vermont right over the border near uh, Hanover Lebanon area they're gonna have the DMA midgets dirt midget association uh, they're USAC sanction sanctioned and they run uh, Ford Focus engines, much like the uh, NEMA light cars do. But they have torsion bar rears, whereas uh, NEMA's, the pavement cars, have uh, coilovers all the way around. And uh, it's really a treat to see them race. It's like watching uh, World of Outlaws midgets or USAC midgets. Uh, we stood in the fourth corner and watched them come around two and three wide turning left but turning right the wheels were turned right and uh, it was really wild so uh, we're gonna hopefully be up to Bear Ridge Saturday night and show you some of that too so there's gonna be a lot of action coming up this summer and we'll be there to show action right through the summer so thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week